Simon Barker. He's one of the best drummers from Australia. Traditional Korean music captivates him. It's amazing. I mean, you've got this incredible energy to it. The, the cycle feeling, the feeling of circles, and the way everybody moves together in Hohu is just, it's just amazing. And the actual the idea of the rhythms, how they sound, is so beautiful. The collections of sounds, the metal and the skin, the high sound, the low sound, the way they fit together, it's very beautiful, very thoughtful. He's found another way to express himself in Korea, the country that he loves. What's the essence of traditional music? Around mid-October, Simon came to Korea from Sydney. Hello. He has visited Korea every year since he's been connected to Korean music. He can't remember the exact number, but he's visited at least 30 times. To Western jazz drummer Simon, Korea is his second home. The next morning, he is up and running barefoot. It's part of his daily routine. His barefoot running seems to fascinate kids. <laughs> Why are you have no shoes? Good question. Because uh, for me, running no shoes is better. No injury, no pain, can run a long way. Ten years ago, when he was physically and mentally exhausted, he began running barefoot. Now, he can run up to 70 kilometers. Why does he run like this? When I'm running, I try to listen to all the rhythms in my body and, and try to find natural uh, bounce. Korean drumming is all about natural movement, natural sound, um, ho -hup. You know, ho -hup, one rhythm, if you relax this muscle here, this, if you relax here, it bounces like that, and you get this rhythm, get, ging, get, ging, get, ging, get, so you can hear the rhythm of your body bouncing. It's the same as practicing drums, no different. Everything he feels and experiences, they all resonate with his music. Simon came to Korea this year for a performance. He has collaborated with various Korean musicians for 20 years now. This time, he'll pair up with a Kamungo player. Okay. Octave pedal. Octave. What does it sound like with octave? Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. I've never heard um, Kamungo through this. Listening to new sounds, it's always a special experience for him. No one has to say anything. His body naturally responds to music. It was the same when he first experienced traditional Korean music 20 years ago. The power and creativity of Korean rhythm was more than enough to mesmerize Australian musician Simon Barker. Simon 씨 같은 경우는 이미 그 사랑에 빠진 거예요. 말하자면 뭔가 온 거죠. 운명적으로 만난 거죠. 한국 음악의 어떤 정서와 
어, 그런 질감들에서 뭔가 느꼈기 때문에 그렇게 갈수 있는 거고. 장장장 어. You like mixing? If his only goal was technical and academic learning, he wouldn't have been able to keep up his interest in a foreign culture for so long. Simon himself says that he doesn't believe in destiny. But was it still his destiny? When Simon first came across Korea's traditional rhythm, he was at a point where he felt like he had reached his limit as a musician. Then, he discovered a new instrument. He has to fix his ching before every performance because the connecting part to the stand is so old. You'll see, ching. It may be a Korean instrument, but it's a must-have item in his drum set. Can we turn the air conditioning lower? Because no good for sound. Every time he performs, he pays attention to even the smallest of details. Like other jazz musicians, Simon was influenced by African American jazz music. However, his music gained even more depth after he met Korean rhythm. Not being from Korea, but when the one thing that um, really struck me about Korean culture is the amount of drumming and rhythm that is central to Korean cultural identity. Every province in Korea has their own drumming tradition. There's shamanic music, um, farmer's music, Buddhist music, all built around this incredibly rich drumming culture. There's ways of putting rhythm together, like the way things are glued together and the way they develop that are, that are unique. A blend of seemingly clashing rhythms, but they can provide endless possibilities for impromptu jam sessions. For me, this rhythm is amazing because it's very, it sounds very simple, but it's very deep. You have two parts. You have this one and another part, almost the same. And when you play them together, you get this. very cycle, very much a circle. And for me, this rhythm is like the essence of Korean circular rhythm. It sounds simple, but you can keep doing it for the rest of your life and keep getting better at this feeling of circular motion. He learned about the cyclical pattern from what's known as Korea's ultimate rhythm, Dongyeon Pyeongshinbuk. Simon wants to share with young Korean musicians what he's learned about traditional Korean rhythm for the past 20 years. Oh, to use this. I was taught here a beautiful thing for thinking about drumming is that when you play chunggu, you play this way. So, um, first note, instead of ta ta, it's Bounce, gather. Can you do this? Bounce, gather. Bounce, gather. And gather, pick up. Let's try with a stick. Bounce. Yeah, and no elbow. Let's imagine when you go dung gi dung, when you lift up your arm, can you imagine bow and arrow? 
can you do bow and arrow? Yeah. So dungi dung, dungi dung, dungi dung, dungi dung. Yes. The key is to use the whole body. Not just stick and hand, full body motion. This is a Korean concept called, called hohop. It's not just trying to practice Korean rhythm, but trying to understand everything about how you use your body, which is hohop, motion, um, breathing, and thinking big sound to make circle rhythm. Jan 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 Play, lift, tighten, release. Long and short sounds, tension and contraction, the crescendo. To Simon, these are the charms of Korean rhythm. Where did he learn the secrets of Korean rhythm? The person who came in a heartbeat to greet Simon is Pansori master Pei Yul Dong. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pei Yul Dong is Simon's friend and music mentor. Oh, my hero. He's also an artist who personifies the warmth of the Korean people. A unique and extraordinary Pansori artist here in Korea. He, for me, he is a great teacher and friend for me. And, uh, and many of the ideas that he has, his philosophy of practice and, and art and connecting um, natural movement and nature has, has been a huge influence on me. So um, to have the opportunity to play together and talk together and share ideas has been one of the most um, precious um, things for me. Pansori and jazz rhythms blend in similar ways. Oh, good. Right. Okay. Yeah. Koreans will use the expression refreshing to describe hot soup. And Simon understands it. He's practically a native Korean. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. Korean culture has broadened his perspectives and sensibility. Chidisan is the second highest mountain in Korea. And it's home to the thousand-year-old Hwalmsha Temple built during the Pekje period. Buddhist music and its rhythm have always greatly inspired Simon as well. That's why he gladly accepted the invitation to perform at the 11th Palm Spiritual Music Ritual. It's the biggest mountain temple music festival in Korea and takes place every year at Palmsa Temple. Many famous artists from Korea and overseas have come. This is Simon's first time joining the festival. Hello. Uh, uh, as a young musician, I was introduced to Korean culture and rhythmic traditions and philosophy. And it was a great gift that has shaped my life for the past 20 years. Um, over that time, I've been so fortunate to have, um, to have engaged with so many wonderful friends and teachers here in Korea who have, um, who have introduced me 
to ways of thinking about making music. The audience is looking forward to listening to what Simon has prepared for this year's performance. Every artist has a unique sound and expression. What kind of performance will they give? Simon cuts across the clear and cool fall breeze sweeping through Chitisan Mountain. Of course, he's barefoot again. Barefoot running, there's no sound. The only sound is your breathing. Feels like you're, well, you feel very connected to the landscape. Plus, because there's no shoe, you're connected to the ground and you feel a sensation with every step. So sometimes I can remember a place by the feeling of the ground on my foot. Chirisan Mountain is also where his friend Pei Dong mastered vocalization. They are in a trio called Chidi. Chirisan has this incredible feeling of like energy when you're here. It's really cool, like especially playing music. Like it feels like when you're running in Chirisan, it's like you're gathering energy for the performance. Before a concert, to do a long run here, maybe two or three hours, just the most beautiful way to get this feeling of, um, it's almost like playing drums without the instrument and getting everything feeling ready, natural motion, a reminder of what music can be. So uh, I guess it's like, um, it is that so sort of thing, running in a place like this is reminding you of what you're trying to do as, a, as an artist. Korean rhythm demonstrates the four seasons of the year. Chidisan Mountain shows nature's ability to sustain life, and Simon's music expresses it. Now, it's time for Simon to use the energy that he received from Chidisan Mountain. Instead of scripture, instrumental music reverberates across the temple. Other artists are also busy with the final rehearsal. Choreographer Chun Yun Jung, she collaborated with Simon on a performance called Gateless Gate. Simon sets up his musical companions. It's a unique drum set that probably no other Western jazz player has. A friend of mine made it, but it's been damaged a lot, so he would be very upset if he saw it. <laughs> he sets up his favorite Qing and adds another Qing used during shamanistic ritual. Drummers just collect different sounds, and this is a Mu Jing, it's a beautiful gong and for me this one is um, has so many possibilities sound possibilities beautiful instrument in the past simon was deeply worried that his music did not quite reflect his interests in life that's when he heard korean music and his music became more dynamic. Simon Barker now gives a rich performance that fuses Western and Korean musical features. Inside there's more resonance in the room. 
and so a small room is different to a big room and outside is different, the sound is bouncing around. This is actually, a, for drums, this is a great place to play. Lots of resonance, feels really nice. Same as him. Every moment he experiences leads to artistic inspiration. He even reads the rhythms in a Buddhist monk's bell sounds. For me it's um, amazing to watch him because when he pulls back the wood, he lets the wood go. So he doesn't push the wood into the bell. He pulls it out with core and then release. So no pushing, just wood falling. And so when you play the drums, it's the same thing. You lift up, but then drop. So this, this is the same as wood. So watching him play the bell is a very good drum lesson. Every sound this world has to offer is a sound to study. The Buddhist monk's procession, Anheng, was named after the way wild geese fly in formations. It's time for the performance to begin. The full moon has risen. Unlike other music festivals, this ritual overflows with spiritual energy. Simon's duet with the Komungo player finally begins. The performance displays the artist's impromptu skills, and Simon shows off the soul of Korean music, the energy of Korean rhythm within him. It's a different kind of thing, you know? So for me, it's just trying to create an energy and a space with a nice shape to it. So you can take people on a little journey. But not like a specific emotion. Just, just having fun together. Dancer Hong Shin Jia's performance follows next. Although it was short, Simon was able to confirm his duty as an artist once again through this performance. The focus for me is trying to keep developing fundamental things, the absolute essence. For me that means natural motion and trying to develop a beautiful sound and keep trying to explore um, who I am as an artist, so trying to find new things new ideas. Stay longer. 